Stop learning AI apps. Actually, stop right now. There is no need to learn every single AI app that's out there. Actually, that is really inefficient to even do. There is real AI app fatigue. I am feeling it. I'm sure you're feeling it too. And when you're on LinkedIn and on TikTok and watching all these videos, there's all these new apps that continue to be released and you feel like, oh my God, I, I need to learn all of these things. You don't. You just need to find a couple of tools that work for you and gain a general understanding of how AI works so that you can apply it surgically. I like this idea of applying it surgically to your creative process. So using myself as an example, I am a senior product designer at Google. So there are certain limitations and certain constraints that I have working at a large tech company that impact where I can use AI, what tools I can use and which I cannot. So I'm going to show you using the double diamond diagram where I use AI strategically in my creative workflow to make myself more efficient as a designer. Okay, you all, I got my coffee in hand. Let's dive into this. So the first phase of the double diamond diagram is the discover and define phase, right? There are three areas that I like to use AI in these two phases. The first one is for idea generation. The second one is for synthesizing the ideas and the data. And the third one is for documentation. How do we document and convey this information to stakeholders or to the team? And the cool thing is that I only need two tools to do most of this work. The first tool is Gemini and the second one is Notebook LM. Now let's start with the idea generation. So I like to use Gemini to help me plan workshops, anything relating to creating a workshop. Gemini and other LLMs are really useful. They're almost like another designer, another person to bounce ideas off of. Something interesting that one of my coworkers used Gemini for was to use it actually as a sprint participant. He trained the LLM to imagine itself as a sprint participant and give feedback and go through the process like that. So you can start to see how there are creative ways for you to use these LLMs in situations where you might not have time to run a sprint or run into issues similar to that. Another part of idea generation is research. So Gemini is great to brainstorm along with your researchers topics for research, help you see emerging patterns from past research. Any task that is related to identifying patterns, AI will be really good at. So think about that when you're going through your own workflow, where are areas that LLMs are good at that I can leverage them for the work that I'm doing? Now let's move into the second section that I mentioned, which is synthesis. I think this one's pretty straightforward. LLMs are really good at summarizing information. If you have research insights, if you have reports, if you have a bunch of how might we or outputs from a creative workshop, you can input that directly into an LLM to give you a summer a summarization or, or help you find patterns that are emerging within that data. Of course, Gemini is a good option for this, but I actually like to use Notebook LM because Notebook LM is constrained to the data that you input into it, right? So it, it, it limits the hallucinations that can happen because it's basing its output solely off of the data that you are inputting into it. Something that I have been doing for my team recently is creating a notebook with all of the research that we have done in that particular problem space that we're trying to tackle. That way, if they have any questions, they can go straight into Notebook LM, go to the notebook and ask the LLM to summarize or give them insights relating to some of the questions that they might have. That has been really helpful instead of having to go through all of the reports individually and read them one by one. Now, the last section is documenting all of this information. Gemini is really good at outputting text format, which you can then turn into a document where it's a sprint summary, product requirement doc, a strategy doc that is based on all of the information you synthesize. Gemini and LLMs are generally good at that. Now, when it comes to personal work or presentations, I like to use Gamma as a presentation tool to create decks. And you can take the text format that you generate in Gemini or your LLM of choice and input it directly into a presentation generator like Gamma to create decks and present that information in a visual way. Having these tools that get the deck prepared for you is such a time saver that I cannot wait for this to be integrated into other LLMs like Gemini, where you don't have to go to another app, it can all happen within it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, 
please hit the like and consider subscribing to the channel. I've noticed that 80% of you are not subscribed. Why not subscribe? You will get notified whenever a new video comes up and you will also help support the channel, which is a big endeavor for me considering that I work full time and I spend my free time making content for you. So consider subscribing and hit the like if you want to see more videos like this one. Now let's jump into the next two phases, which is literally a different phase because it's been a couple hours since I shot the last part of the video. Just, just saying. But anyways, these next two phases, I believe, are one of the most crucial parts where AI can have an impact into our workflow, especially in the prototyping phase. So a lot of the optimization that I have been able to do with AI has been in the prototyping aspect of the design process. And you all, it's honestly been transformative. Like the ability that we have now with these AI apps to prototype things that we would need a UX engineer or an engineer to help us build, it's still hard to wrap your head around once you start playing with these apps. And I want to focus specifically on this video on today's sponsor, Emergent. Emergent is a Vive coding app that you literally type a sentence into and it generates an app for you. And the thing that blew my mind about Emergent is that it's not just a no code app. It's actually an app that generates Python code along with your app. So you can actually scale this and turn this into a real product, which really makes us stand out from the, from the crowd. I've been thinking about this app that I've been wanting to build where the app diagnoses the health of my plants and using Emergent to build this app was so seamless and so fast. And all I did was literally not even type a real sentence. I know what's crazy is that I didn't even have to connect an API because Emergent just seamlessly integrated with some of the existing models out there and allowed you to choose based on your budget which one you wanted to use. That was another thing that I really loved. There was a guided aspect about Emergent that really walked you through the entire process and tried to do as much of the boring network for you. So this is truly a product that allows anyone to build apps. And for those of you that are more advanced, Emergent will help you with debugging the app. It will help you scaling the app. It will even set up user authentication process for users to actually use your app. It's kind of insane. A lot of the competitors out there don't allow you to do this backend kind of work, but Emergent does. All you need is an idea like my plant identification app, and you can take that idea into a real product. Use the custom link in my bio to get some free credits and start building your own app today. Now you're probably wondering, Ricardo, why did you go straight into prototyping? You didn't even go into the wireframing aspect of the, of the work. Well, the truth is that now that we have these AI tools, we are able to go straight into prototyping to test ideas out. And it actually doesn't take that long. I mean, you just saw how fast and easy it is to work with Emergent. I can't use Emergent for my work at Google because it's internal, but I use AI Studio, which is a similar product by, by Google. And you all, I just go straight into AI Studio and I start mocking up ideas. Like the fact that we can actually use APIs and tie it into LLMs and actually get real experiences. One, it allows you to test more realistic experiences with your, with your users. And two, it gives you an idea of what the experience would actually be like. And you don't have to make a super high fidelity experience. You can keep it wireframing. That's totally fine. But having the ability to test your product ideas in a close to real life scenario as possible is worth way more, in my opinion, than a wireframe. And this doesn't mean that wireframes and mocks are going away. It's just a more fluid process. Now, if you're really interested in knowing which apps give you the ability to wireframe faster and mock faster, I would check out Stitch by Google and then also Figma Make. These are great tools to crank out wireframes so fast that you'd be like, oh my God, why I was spending all of this work doing it all by myself before. It's crazy. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the deliver phase, but I want to leave you with this. You can think creatively about the kind of things that you can do in the deliver when you are analyzing your experiments, when you are testing your designs. Think about and imagine all of the ways that AI could help you go through data, analyze experiments, A-B test, predict, understand user behaviors. There are so many ways that you can do that, that the opportunities are limitless. So let me know in the comments below, what do you use? What do you think we could use AI in the delivery phase of the design process? Now you all, I don't want this video to get too long. I just wanted to give you a high level overview of the tools that I am using in my creative 
process. Now, keep in mind, this is changing every day because every day we get new tools. But remember what I told you, do not feel like you have to learn every single tool. Learn a few that make you a faster designer, a stronger designer, and forget about everything else. Just keep keep up to date with anything new that might come that might be a extra tool to the arsenal of tools that you already have. With that said, let me know in the comments, what are you doing as a designer to stay up to date in this AI crazy world that we're living in? Share with the community so we can all learn from one another. And if you want to learn how you can use AI agents to up level your design work, check out my latest video on the left side where I talk about why designers should be building AI agents. Now, I'll see you all in that video. Bye.